Hi, my name is Jim Scalgi. I'm a professor at the University of Hawaii, have been for 20 plus years. On paper, I teach assistive technology, media, that sort of thing. In reality, I hope that my students get that we use technology for the rich set of tools it provides in order to give voice to people. Now, can you make music out of this liberator? <laughs> Why are friends important? Because they are good to play with and fun to talk to. Now, this is your voice. I didn't say. I only asked questions. Let's go to the beginning of our movie and let's see if we have a music video. Stories are amazing venues of communication because they take you places you've never been, introduce you to people you've never met. They give you a chance to see the world through others' eyes. In this field of special education, the idea of letting people with disabilities speak for themselves, very important. And I kind of fell into that early on in my own career. I, I had this belief that in special ed we had all the great stories. You know, we, we've had story after story of people that are just amazingly able to overcome and succeed. I've seen parents of children with disabilities who don't know they've got a story to tell. So then you work with them and you get your camera and you get out your pen and paper and you do whatever you do to help make that story come alive. And in the process, you start seeing that, that family grow in its confidence that it has something to give back, and then they want others to hear it. They want to share it. And the belief is for the best. It's not to make them famous or any of that. That's ridiculous. It's this sense that maybe I've been through something in this world that can help you get through it a little more easily. I'm not a trained technologist. I'm not a professional videographer. I've never gone to film schools, none of those things. And the, the truth is I never really wanted to. I have taken some pride in kind of producing high amateur work and keeping it there. I have consciously made the decision to use tools that I can teach my students to use. I, I'm not one who goes down to my office and buries myself in expensive uh, editing software, for example. I like to use off-the-shelf software, and I really always like to use cameras that were pretty much off-the-shelf at Best Buy or whatever. Just something that was, I guess you'd say, almost home uh, home level. I've often thought I'm not in the business of producing media for even for film festivals. I really want to produce media that is simple enough that any of us can produce it, including children. I think that probably has fit my spirit, which is that the story trumps the polished product. Uh, we'd, I'd rather you get out there and do something rather than spend, you know, time lamenting the fact that you, you aren't skilled enough. In my classes throughout my career, I, I really have tried to bring storytelling into my teaching. Not just 
an anecdotal story, you know, not just tell a little anecdote. I wanted to take stories and see if I could polish them up so that they really had a purpose. And then I made the movie look grainy and old, and I narrated it, and I made my voice sound I kind of embrace this notion of digital storytelling, you know, mix and match, multiple media, so little video clips and photographs and music. And I could put all this media into one framework and then I could also be there to tell the story. Uh, every year we have what's called the Now you've been doing some other interesting things using video with young people. Yeah, we started a kid. When I arrived here in Hawaii, I made the commitment that one year after my arrival, I had 12 months to get ready to mount a, a video uh, television show the on assistive and technology the itself goes with the video right. so that deaf people, families of deaf children can read the story, physically read the story. My plan was that I would not just do little films of people showing me how they live their lives, people with disabilities, using technology, but then I'd invite them to come on the program and they would be my guest. Today we are honored to have a, an old friend, Helena Farden, with us, and we'd show the little video roll, and then they would talk about their video. And it was a real simple format. It was in the voices of the guests. It was their stories. And um, one year later, we started a two-hour-a-week television show. Uh, we went 10 weeks. It seemed to succeed. The university invited us to do it two more times, so we just kept on the air every week. And before too long, the Department of Education had seen the shows and decided they would invite us to produce shows for them. You look way better than I did. I never tired of it. If there is perhaps a takeaway from what I've learned. It's that stories aren't just to be told, they're to be made. Stories are people in action in the world. And we're all people, and we're all in the world, and we can all get off and, and act. I do have a belief in this world of special education that inclusion creating a world in which all of us feel welcome. It doesn't just happen. It's made. It is constructed by people who get up and act in the world. That's really what I want my students to get. And where does technology fit in that? It, in many cases, increases our effectiveness a thousandfold. It lets us document the story as it unfolds. It lets us share it with audiences many times whom we've never met. To me, it is a natural that we should be using technologies for voice as a part of our um, everyday tool set when we attempt to impact this world. Well, thanks very much for talking with us. I hear the bell. Maybe we should uh, boogie off. Thank you all. Appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe we should do a shaka sign for the cameras, should we? <laughs>